things, we've worked with them. And they call us seven days a week. I have staff with Blackberries taking calls nights and weekends because writers often have very short deadlines. And they'll get to a point and they'll call us and say, we need a pediatric geneticist in two hours. And we have a huge database of experts and we hook them up. We facilitate a phone conversation or we do this by email. We never leave them alone together. We always facilitate because that ensures that it goes well. Um, yeah. We have other forms of um, outreach. We have panel discussions. We, um, Hollywood Health and Society has a partnership with the Writers Guild of America West. And I'm sure you've heard of the Writers Guild and the Writers Strike last year that lasted 100 days. So we hold our panel discussions there. Um, we also have an annual award ceremony, the Sentinel for Health Awards, to recognize exemplary health storylines in television. And we had six categories this year. We had primetime drama, daytime drama, primetime comedy, Spanish language telenovela, and children's programming. And we also had minor storyline and major storyline. So we gave out 13 awards. We also evaluate the impact of our programs, and I'm going to get into that in a minute. So let's take a look at another example. Has anybody here not seen the show House? Okay. So for those of you who haven't seen it, um, this is a medical mystery show. Um, the creator of the show is a lawyer, and so he designed a medical show like a crime show, only in this case, the culprit is the germ or the cause of the disease. And so it's a process of elimination, of trying to you know, get down to the cause so then there can be a cure and you can save the patient. Um, so let's take a look at this clip. How old are you? 30. And you've never seen an after-school special, Dawson's Creek? And you get to 30 and not know about condoms. Oh, God, I have an STD. No, but you will. Every patient who comes in here for an STD test has one thing in common. They had a SWS, sex while stupid. How old are you? 60. <laughs> You're lying. That's not the point. You've never seen Dawson's Creek. <laughs> and you've never seen an after-school special. How do you look to your age and not know about condoms? I have an STD. Yeah. You're actually the first one today. Lucky day. Well, not for you, but you gotta feel good for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> it's chlamydia. As bad news goes, it's about the best. <laughs> we'll settle down. It's treatable. It's actually curable. All you gotta do is take these pills. Don't touch me! Oh, God. I need someone to cover a patient. House, you committed to... She was raped. So these shows can deal with some very serious issues. So last season, Hollywood Health and Society placed over 140 um, informational links. For some reason, this didn't work. Yeah, informational links to the House website. What we do is actually we, we post tip sheets with links embedded in them to credible sources of information. And what we wanted to know was you know, we wanted to know about the health-seeking behavior for further information triggered by the shows. So we looked at the CDC topics. These are uh, topics that the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are interested in with the highest number of web hits because we refer people to their websites. And the, these were the five top topics of which four are sexual and reproductive health topics like the episode, the clip you saw from the episode on House. So what we looked at here, um, okay, uh, we were looking at, so 
if you look at day zero, day zero is when House airs the episode. They don't let us post the web link until day one because, if, because it's a medical mystery. If we were to post the web link on day zero and people were to see it ahead of time, it would blow the mystery. So they won't let us reveal that. So we post on day one. You see these huge peaks in search, web hits to these websites on day one. And then seven days later, a smaller peak, but it's still a peak. And again, seven days later. So what we know is people go back to the website each week and they're seeing our links up there, even though it's not related to the current show. And people are searching for further information. Then we wanted to know about the timing of search behavior. So rather than looking at just the CDC websites, what we did is looked at search engine data. So people during the episodes use Google or Yahoo, some other search engine, and start looking for um, information on, in this case, the red peak is chlamydia, and the blue one is bacterial vaginosis. And if you look at this chart, they were searching between 9 and 10 p.m. Well, that's exactly when the show airs. What that tells us is that people are multitasking. They're, watch they're not waiting till this episode's over. They're already online going, whoa, I have these symptoms too. I want to know more about this. So now we're going to go to another topic. Um, I don't know if anybody here recognizes. This is Dr. Atul Gawande. Um, Atul Gawande is a Harvard-trained surgeon. Um, he is very well known for a number of reasons. One is a physician. The other is that he's a full-time writer, staff writer with The New Yorker. And he has two best-selling books, top 10 of Amazon.com. Um, and he also happens to work with the World Health Organization. Well, Hollywood Health and Society is very interested in world health and global health. We've got funding from Gates. Our mission is to get global health topics into TV storylines. So we got in touch with Atul Gawande, who is working with World Health Organization on something called the Safer Surgical Checklist. This is the checklist. It's very simple. It's just one little sheet with a few little items. Um, and they're promoting its use before surgery starts. It takes two minutes, very low tech, pull a little piece of paper out of the pocket, read off, and it starts with asking the patient, the patient's name and why they're there. Now they're lying, they're ready to be knocked out, but they're not knocked out yet. Then they go around and introduce each other. Everybody in that operating suite introduces themselves by name and by uh, function, what they're there for. And things like that, have they started the IV? Well, what, what the data show is that the use of this checklist can reduce infections and complications due to surgery by 50% around the world. So we brought in, and apparently there's, our, there's huge resistance on the part of many physicians to using this simple tool because they've been so highly trained, they probably don't need it, but actually the world does need it. So a tool, uh, came to do some briefings for us and we took him to meet with the writers of ER and with the writers of Law and Order SVU, Special Victims Unit. We're going to focus on ER. He did the most wonderful briefing. The writers loved him. It went very well and they told us as we left that they would incorporate this safer surgical checklist into an episode, but I didn't know exactly when or how prominent it would be. So. This episode aired on March 12th. Was that a week or two, two weeks ago? A week ago? Yeah. And this was the big, did anybody here see the March 12th episode when George Clooney returned? Two people in the back. And uh, Juliana uh, Margolis, is that right? And some others all came back to the show. So let's take a look. We have a visitor. I don't remember being asked if Dr. Benton could scrub in for this. I'm a friend of the patient. He asked if I would observe. Uh-huh. Put him under. Let's do this. Whoa, whoa. What about the checklist? Excuse me? Safe surgery checklist? I've had 10 cases a day, doctor. All the more reason to take the necessary precautions. It'll only take a minute. One minute. John Carter here for a right cadaveric renal allograft. Does the patient have a known allergy? No. Does anesthesia anticipate a difficult airway? No. Is the risk of bleeding greater than 500 cc's? I sure as hell hope not. Let's go put them under. Whoa, 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 whoa. Everybody slow down. Now let's just 
take our time and introduce the room. What's next? We all hold hands and sing Kumbaya. Sheila Lane, scrub nurse. Paula Cheney, circulating nurse. Gay Schumacher, anesthesiologist. Randall Okerman, chief surgical resident. Ethan Dean, surgical intern. Peter Benton, observing general surgeon. Any concerns from the surgical team? Oh my god, you're wasting my time. Any nursing concerns? We don't have any reperfusion solution. We won't be needing it. I'll have some set up. Were any antibiotics given in the last 60 minutes? Just starting them now. Ten blade. Oh, hold on, hold on. If you run the antibiotics prior to incision, you cut the risk of infection by half. Dr. Benton, you're a guest here, and I don't like guests. As a friend of the patient, you're welcome to sit, observe, and shut up. Ten blade. Donor left atrium to the native arterial cuff. Arterial venous anastomosis are complete. Releasing the clamp. Suture lines look good to leaks. I'd like to be for the ureter. Shouldn't it be thinking up by now? What happened to sitting quietly in the corner, Dr. Benton? No, seriously, shouldn't it be? Sometimes it takes a minute. I don't have a prank, my pulse. Got an arterial thrombosis. Reclamp and take out the suture. Satinsky, please. Where's the clock? Renal artery is obstructing the blood flow. Gonna have to take it out and start all over again. Problem solved. Flush with heparin saline and reperfusion solution. Reperfusion solution? We've got it. We're all set. Oh, well, it's a good thing we just have some lying around, huh? How long did it take to get the reperfusion solution up from the pharmacy? 15 minutes. What happens if you don't have the reperfusion solution? You made your point, doctor? No, I disagree, doctor. I think that this is an excellent teaching opportunity. You'd have had 15 minutes of warm ischemia, the way you would have taken a major blow, and there's a good chance we would have ended up with a non-functioning kidney. Wouldn't you agree, doctor? If we're all done teaching here. Perhaps some of you would like to assist me in getting this kidney back into the patient's body. Where do you get a copy of that checklist? No, people! This episode has had such repercussions around the world, it's really amazing. You know, you don't think about physicians actually watching these shows and learning from them. Well, they do. They do. They both watch and they learn. So, uh, this show it aired on a Thursday night. The next morning, at 6 a.m., there was a meeting of surgeons in a hospital in New York. 150 surgeons. And the reason I know this is a friend of Atul's <coughs> sent him an email and he forwarded it to me. And the agenda for this uh, surgical group's meeting was to watch a film on safe surgery and have a discussion. So all 150 surgeons were there. They were forced to watch the entire episode of ER and afterwards they had a discussion about how to use the safer surgical checklist in their orthopedics practice. So it really does. And I have to tell you, the day before I, I, I flew to El Paso, which was two days ago, I got an email from France, from the man who is the head of the um, quality of care and quality assurance program for the country. And there had been an, some news coverage of this episode, and I had been interviewed, and that's how he found me. And he wrote to me in this wonderful English, which was kind of, you know, his obviously second or third or fifth language, asking me how he could get a clip of this piece of, of the episode so that he could use it for teaching purposes nationally in France. So these shows really do have impact. So I just, um, this was the story I just told you. Um, so we won't go over that now. This one, okay, so we're staying with the global health theme. Um, we did, a briefing with Law & Order SVU on a different topic that had to do with HIV deniers in Africa. And this is based on a true story about the president of Gambia and the former minister of health of South Africa, who 